Thanks everybody for coming today to the AGM and to, to listen to Chris talk. And a big, big thank you to Chris coming all the way from Athens to do a little talk today. Um, any questions, Chris has said it interrupt him. Um, doesn't mind answering any questions as you go along. Um, Chris Venturas. First of all, I want to thank you for being all together here today. Uh, I want also to say that uh, my knees uh, are not so well, so maybe I made some mistakes time to time. Please excuse me for that. And as Mark said, any questions, you can grab me. We can make a good conversation to take together. I want to thank WFS and uh, Mark Eaton especially for being uh, here today. Okay. The start. The start was uh, about eight years to nine years ago. This is a small bedroom I make on my own. Wooden cages. A very is one. Uh, cages are not too big. It's one meter to one meter, but it's high enough. There, I start breeding my first black spits. Uh, it took it took me about three years to work there. Not extremely uh, good results, but uh, I made some good efforts with fire pinches and lavender. After those time, I come to a new place. Okay, the new place now located in Athens. Here is the place where uh, we have a very good soft bills and uh, also breathing rooms. Uh, here is the lake and all around you can see a big beer with soft bills uh, in mixed collections. Here we used to drink our coffee in the morning. And now let's go to the main facility. This is the breathing room uh, facility. It's a big building measuring 40 meters in length and 5 meters. Uh, it separates in two rooms. Two rooms, which inside each room separates in four rooms more. So I can have eight isolated rooms, one from each other. And I can keep, uh, keep uh, populations of birds isolated from the other populations. For example, I can keep in one room part finches and the other bengalis, etc., etc. You can see here how uh, it's from the entrance, uh, the whole way. Uh, the breeding cages, it's two types. I have the Italian breeding cages. Mostly it's uh, Cilion, this, this one, it's 60 centimeters old. And also we have the Italian Gabi brand. It's from the other side of the building. You can see here how it's <coughs> the, the cage is being. Uh, here it's the second room. In each room, where I have the youngsters, it's big cages, 80 to 80 centimeters. Here I used to put my youngsters each year. And when the season stops, all the youngsters go outside in big aviaries. So, until end of July, all these youngsters will go in big aviaries and then I try to sell or keep for me or anything like this. Before last rooms, I have two rooms with Bengalis. I'm using a lot of Bengalis. Not so much for my for my wax pits, but uh, I'm using them for rare species. And uh, the pairs I have, it's not so many as the pairs I breed, but it's uh, always a good tool to have Bengalis, I think. And here is the last room. I get some Bengalis and some canaries for foster parents. This is the room from the other side. You can see that in this side the sun is much much more. <laughs> And this is good for me for bugs with like uh, twin spots and uh, crimson seed crackers and other difficult species. Okay, and this is what I'm trying to do with uh, the more difficult species. I'm trying to put uh, plastic plants outside of the cages to make them feel more comfortable. Also, I'm adding music sometimes. For green twin spots, I use a lot of music. And uh, maybe not only music, but uh, running water sound. Uh, I thought that this helps. Uh, I, I tried it this for two years, but uh, the music don't help so much. And the greens, it's not necessary anymore. So I have to say, I, this was my effort, but now I have to say that it's not necessary to succeed in breeding. Okay, in general, this is the main breeding room. I also breed in other rooms. But we'll see that later. The right conditions for me, it's the color, the right temperature, and the light for the birds. Okay. I have to find a way 
to have clean air inside the breathing room. This is a machine which puts out the air and keeps the temperature right. So if I want to heat the, the breathing room in winter, I don't have problems with the ventilation system, so the temperature don't go out and comes in the cold air. The cold air. What this, temperature do you keep it at? Sorry? What temperature do you keep It's around 20 to 25 degrees. <coughs> this is uh, easy during the winter time and the spring time. My problem is in summertime. Because in Athens, the weather is uh, too hot. Yeah, it's uh, the opposite on here. The pipes running on the building, artificial light everywhere, and uh, windows on the top of the roof. So I can have clear sunlight inside the breathing room, and also I have windows, which I open every day, and I have more fresh and clean air. That's my solution for the world in Athens. You said you put your young beds out in the aviaries. Do you never put your adults out in the aviaries? Sorry? Do you never put your adults out in the aviaries? The, the, the... The adults. No, no. The adults, I'm putting, I have two big aviaries, mm -hmm. measuring six to four, each one, six meters to four meters, and I'm separating in two groups, males and females, and I'm putting them for three to four months outside. So do you split every species, male and female? Yeah. Maybe the mannequins and the moons, I don't succeed every time, but uh, I'm trying a lot with twin spots and things like that. And this is the solution I have for the hot temperatures, air conditioning. Air conditioning run from May to August, all day, all day. Yeah. yeah, because the windows I have on the roof, it's a big problem, raising the temperature to 30, 38, uh, depends on the day. And uh, inside, you can't breathe, you can't do anything. It's a big problem. And for the co uh, colder winter times, I have a pellet heater. I'm not using too much, but in case I have too cold temperatures, it's not a solution. And here you can see the windows, how I'm using it. Okay, at night, the main lights turn off, and there is a LED uh, light, which is 100% lighting before the lights turn off, and after the lights turn off, it falls down to 20%. Just in case, you know, uh, female frightening go outside and uh, have to return in its nest. So I have light even at night. This is the... Okay, we forgot the breeding room. It's inside where I breed in cages. But most species is not so easy to breed, even in cages. So we have an outside area. In these areas, we used to keep soft bills, but also some box bills. <coughs> Or in two pairs sometimes. This is me taking the birds. The photo is not good, it's uh, from my girlfriend. <laughs> she can't take good photos. Anyway, uh, the aviaries is uh, 56 in number. 56 aviaries measuring 2 meters to 0 0.8 and 2 meters high. It's perfect for me for one pair of axes. I tried with two pairs or more, more it's a disaster, two pairs not working. It's not enough, the space. You can see here, there is a door, uh, and above the door there is a small window where I can open it and put the trays on it, or on nesting material, or whatever I want. So I can't, I don't have to get inside the cage and uh, make the birds don't feel uh, comfortable. The watering system I'm using is something cheap, not quite uh, good, but uh, it's something that uh, can keep my mind clear that the birds have water. It's a, a big pipe running all the aviaries, and from that, running water every five, five times per day, and the water drops in that uh, small plate there. The birds go bathing, yes, it's, it gets dirty, but I clean them uh, once every week. So, and here I, I say that less is better. In the right photo I have an Negrita. An um, it's not so quite with the photo, but... And on the left uh, photo I have a pair of uh, pigment cardinals. I used, I tried to breed in the same aviary, and uh, just was a disaster. The big meat start breeding, and the males uh, kill the Negrita birds. So, it's less is better, you can put 
In a beer is one uh, breathing pair and you can have results. More, maybe you're looking for trouble. And then you're looking for trouble. Okay, that's for the facility. What, what, where I'm using to breathe. For the food. I'm not using something special, not a special brand, not something expensive. I'm using seeds from local markets, Greek, Greek brands, and uh, I make my own mix. My mix have a lot of seeds, not the best quality always. You can see I'm using curry seed on 30%, white millet, grass seed, yellow millet, the Japanese millet, and the red pine. I mix them all together, it's a photo you saw on the first, and uh, I'm putting this food for the breeding pairs. For all the other birds, even in summer, I'm using 50% of a brand, a cheap brand, so I can make economy for my food. So 50% of what I make, 50% of the economy brand, and give to the birds. Not something special, not something expensive. Here is the mix. For watering. Not something special here. I have made a watering system. Lots of you have seen it. There is two tanks above the roof of the breeding room. It's 150 liters each. Each tank running a main pipe inside the breeding room. And from that main pipe goes smaller pipes to the cages. These ones. And have droppings for the birds. I use it for one and a half year now. I'm not satisfied. I'm using also drinkers. You see, every, every cage has a drinker. Because it's six, 600 plus cages inside the breeding room. So, if a bird put a seed inside this small uh, drink, uh, drinker, there's a problem. I have to check every day the uh, pipes. I can't do this. So, I have the drinkers also. Yeah, it's a waste of time, I know, but it's the best I can do. So, my birds have all this water. Now, I'm starting with egg food. You have something to ask about uh, water and food? Keep on. Okay, the egg food. We are cookers. That's what I say. Everybody have its own, make its own recipe, uh, put his things inside, try more, try less. Uh, the most uh, common thing is the protein. We need to raise the protein to the birds. What I make to make to what I put to make my egg food is in the base I use 15% of dry batter. Anything, any source of egg food. Anything. Send it, I don't know the brands. I'm using Unica for example, Royal, anything you have in the market. 20% of vegetables. Sported seeds, I made vegetables. Peas, frozen marks, everything is vegetables. 10% of eggs, 15% of frozen insects, which is the best for me, when you have to breed them and you have to rear the youngsters, and 5% of liquids. Liquids is vitamins in uh, the form of uh, uh, water or, uh, you know, if you just mash the carrots and the beans, there are liquids inside, so you get a better mix. I prepare a video of uh, you have the willing to see how I make it. I can explain as it, the video is running. Here you can see the egg food I'm using. It's uh, Vita Mole. I'm using 60, 600 ml of uh, dry egg food. I used to use this uh, egg food as, uh, as you can see it on my birds before breeding. I'm putting uh, once a week to the breeding birds. After that week, I'm starting putting mine at home. Here I'm putting happy bird products. This is the white soft food. And there is another product which Luigi Montini uses a lot, maybe a lot of you know it, for a reduction of uh, acid finches. <coughs> What's that called, Chris? Sorry? What's that product? These products are uh, Happy Birds, it's a brand uh, from Italy. 
the the equity I'm using at last it has a big amount of protein inside. It's uh, like dust. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So it's more easy for the birds to take it. That's the only reason I'm using it. Not something special. I have used a lot of them <coughs> in the past, but this is the best for me. Now, I still have carrots inside, three carrots fresh, nothing special. So, with this way in the mixer, I have more liquids in the mixer. The liquid I prepare every day in the morning, where it's breeding period, all the birds, breeding birds and youngsters take it. Youngsters take it two times per day. When I say we are cookers, I mean that we have to use the recipe, not take the ingredients and put all of them together in a mixer. We have to do it in steps. So as you see, first I put the dry matter, then I put the vegetables, then I put the eggs, then the frozen insects, and the liquids and the vitamins, etc. There is a way to prepare it, so you have a good result. And the good result is not for our eyes, it's good for the birds to eat. So it's small pieces. If you make a pasta or a cake, a small things can't, can't eat it. That's why I mean uh, I say that. <coughs> Here I'm using frozen peas and uh, um, sorry, peas and uh, sorted monk peas as more vegetables. <coughs> Putting them all together. Also, boiled seeds. I want to boiled seeds uh, not too often, but uh, when I have young seeds, I, I use the boiled seeds. Uh, I think that it's not necessary for the birds to get in condition and start breeding, but for youngsters, it's good. To keep in health, to digest more easy for them. <coughs> okay, that's a new a product from Italy. I don't know if you know the new defender. It's for better digestion and better health for young birds. It's not something special. Again, I'm using, using it to add the liquids, the moist I need in the mixture. Is that like the gut flora? Sorry? Is it like gut flora? Uh, you know, I, 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 my mentor is Luigi Montini, and uh, he used to say that he noticed that the birds with this product are healthier, the young birds. So I'm using it because of him, I'm not, I'm not noticing that it's good for them. Yeah. But he told me that I, I used to use it. That's it. Adding vitamins and minerals. Different kinds, whatever you want, whatever you have. I told before to the guys outside, it's not necessary the brand. Vitamins are vitamins. You have from pigeons, you have from Greece, you have from Turkey, it's not an important thing. It's vitamins. <coughs> And then put them all together. Start putting the eggs up. Uh, eggs, uh, two of them are with the cell. 
So, in this way, I can give confidence to my Bengali because I don't put any trace with Excel or things like that. So, the cell, I put two, two eggs in the cell so the Bengali can have some calcium. That is. After that, you can see that what I'm using for calcium. Yeah. Okay, in general, I have to, to proceed the video a little bit. Or I can't. Sorry, but I changed the computer and I don't know how to proceed the video. You have to see it. How to drink my coffee. You see, it's one egg for uh, four spoons, five spoons, as I see. Uh, if you put, if I put less, there is, there is going to be a cake, it's like a cake. So it's good to eat for us, not for the birds. How long did you buy the eggs for? Sorry? How long did you buy the eggs for? I bought the eggs for 10 to 15 minutes, not more. You see now I put with the cell, thanks to the cell. You give the wax pills calcium then? I give them calcium in the um, form of egg cells. That's what you give the wax pills in the lab. Yeah. Yeah, but this is not the only form of calcium I, I give, I'm giving. Uh, you will see in the later part what I'm giving. This is the result. You see the small excels inside and all of other things. In this picture, I'm putting the frozen insects. Not too many, because too many is a problem if you want to part of them. But uh, for this mixture, in this one, which I'm using, uh, about 300 ml of each. Buffalo and pinkies. Because if you give more, parents will want to breed again, not to feed the gangsters. And then you have problems. <coughs> and then I mix them all together, wait in five minutes, and go straight to the birds. The birds of the birds have to be have to, to be given slowly. So when you start giving them. I start, for example, the first week, as I told you, without any insects, just a dry, every day. After that, I'm just using this once. After the next week, third week, I'm using it two or three times per week. And fourth week, I start every day. <coughs> and this is the final result. Okay. Any questions about the egg food? You see a big video now. And, uh, <laughs> okay, I, I will say something about the medicine and that parasite. Uh, I'm not using anything. And uh, it's not because I don't have uh, sick birds, but uh, I have too many birds. And uh, in case I don't have a virus or something that can, co can cause problems to all my birds, uh, it's unnecessary, in my point of view, to lose time, money, uh, in one bird, to save one bird, life, and in most cases you can't use it again. Yeah, I'm trying with some birds, I give antibiotics, but not something special. If I have a sick bird, I go them in a separate room, I put an antibiotic or something, whatever the bird has, and just this. Also about mites and things like that, I don't disinfect my cages before. I just clean them. I don't put any any products. 
I just put you know products from the local market, not for birds, for humans. Just this. When I have the problem, I go to it. I do whatever I can, but only I put medicines and antiparasitics when I have the problem. For vaccines, nesting material, very important, I think. Uh, most common I'm using the coconut fiber, the white one, the feeders, feeders from rest of chicken or peacocks or whatever you have. And hay, hay helps a lot because mites don't grow in hay. Don't like hay. That's the fact. And I'm using in Bengalis mostly hay. I put them in Bengalis nest on the bottom, so I don't have so much problem with uh, different exoparasites. Okay, here you can see the extras, as I say. In the photo you can see mealworms. I'm not using mealworms at all. I'm using only frozen, as I told my friend before, because the mealworm, it's bad, no good, as I noticed. Mealworms goes to the soft bits. We have seed eaters, we don't have to use it. In the extras I have the cake. Yes, I make cake. The cake I give to my birds is the egg food you see before. But with a little bit of flour, I put it in the oven and then I give to the breeding pairs when I have them in rest condition. I give one piece, you know, in a big flock of 50 or 60 birds and they can have whatever they want. Nothing more. Just when they're resting. Also in the extra, millet, spray, peanut, I give my green. Some extra. Not daily, just to be answer. Spinach I'm giving once a week to my lavenders and uh, generally on vaccines, like uh, lavenders, black chicken, and things like that. But even more important are the grass seeds. Bonio paddy, the normal grass seeds. Vaccines love it. I think you know John. Bonio paddy, they used to say that it's good for their health. I don't know if it's good, but it's good for their uh, uh, not to get boring, so one tray of on your body every day or of grass seeds, whatever you want, whatever I want, whatever I have at the time. And for a calcium, as you say before, I have the mass excels. Every cage has a tray with mass excels. Not when I start breeding, all year round. Never have problem, even with fire pinches, which uh, are more fragile in this situation. It's the best. And uh, on the last photo, you can see the minerals I'm using. Also, there is a tray with this kind of minerals. Here you can see fresh grass seeds. I used to cut the grass seeds from the fields years around, frozen them, and when I need them in winter, put them inside the case. Now I changed my philosophy. I start breeding November, and when I have youngsters, they are already outside green seeds. So I cut from outside. I don't have the time to have so big quantities to feed all my birds with green seeds. So when I have, I'm giving. And the, past part, the best part is when you give to the youngsters to breed to birds like green green spots and uh, uh, you know uh, seed crackers. It's good to have them. How do you get all the seed crackers? Sorry? Have you dead seed crackers? No. no. Have you kept them alive? Yep. I have some, I want you to photo of them. Okay. Now it's the general, what I'm using, what I'm doing, what's the facility like. Do you have any questions about that? Proceed to the species. Okay. Here I can get further. Okay. For the blue boxes. Uh, I don't like them so much. Sorry if somebody likes too much. But I have to put them inside. The red six golden blues. You know the problem in south is that there are a lot of imports. Here are imported birds. Uh, the lot of imports uh, makes another problem. Uh, it's that uh, when I breed, for example, red six golden blues, I have to sell them, okay? Because I breed a lot. And when I come to sell them, I need some money for them. For example, 100 euros. But you can't have wine for 5 euros, so you can't sell. Captive bread, it's, not impo it's impossible in Greece, in Italy, in South Europe to sell. 
because people don't know what's the difference because most of the people uh, between the captive bread and the white bread. So they prefer the white. So for me, it's not value for money. I'm giving them and I'm breeding because I want them. Not for another, uh, any other reason. <coughs> um, so there are mutations also. You have seen the mutation with the uh, uh, oral seek, the white. This is it's not good because uh, the projectors don't like too much, but the birds it's like pastel. Uh, okay, when you have them together, you see it. It's clear pastel, the one youngster on the right photos. Red seek problem blues. The mutation, I don't know where it comes from. I take it from Italy. I breed the birds. Have to, to find some more individuals to <coughs> keep the map clear. The blue cup, Gordon Blue, I don't have to say something about them. Very easy. Red to breed from the start. Not so much health problems. Easy to find here. Not a problem at all. The problem comes with the other. The Angola. We don't have uh, birds to breed. Uh, I start searching in Italy. Uh, searching in Bulgaria, in Turkey, we managed to found a, uh, a group of five birds. At last, I have one male, two females, no results at all. Because, as always happens, and as always say, you need to have at least three to four pairs to know how the birds working, how the, how the birds can breed. Because maybe one pair, one pair don't breed, maybe the other breeds. So the Angola is a problem for us. The burden is not such a, such a big problem. If you foster them, if you don't foster them, I don't know if it's a problem. <laughs> well, there is a way to, to, to pardon your purple. I told them before. Uh, in Aviris, the male used to throw out the chicks from the nest. They incubate strong, they have the youngsters, and the male suddenly throw out the chicks of the nest. Uh, once I find real about uh, five different cutsies from one pair, by a single way, I took a, a group of 20 pinches, five, I opened the aviary and throw them out, throw them in. The male starts chasing the 20 pinches and stop throwing the youngsters outside. So the aggression of the male goes to the other birds and keeps calm for his nest. That's what I found and what I noticed, but in one pair. It doesn't mean that that's a solution. Uh, the numbers are high. Uh, now it's good to breed when Tanzania stopped exporting. So we raise a lot of their numbers. A lot of people want them. Nobody breeds them in South. At least. Here's the youngsters. And after that, the common brain there. Instead of purple, more easy to keep for me. Uh, more willing to breed. And uh, if you want to parent rear, the parents are uh, the birds are better parents than the purple. I'm not parent parent rear them so much so much. I'm using the babies for them. Okay, let's start with the good. Fire finches. A lot of species, a lot of subspecies. There is a big mess, you know, uh, because the agriculture in South is not so big. Uh, we don't have the knowledge. I have seen um, breeders try to breed uh, Rara with uh, Rubricata, and they thought that it's made and female. I have seen a lot. But in, ca uh, in any case, uh, fire finches are willing breeders. All, all fair princes, even, even the most difficult. If you put them in cage, they, they are willing to breed. They want to breed. They want to make nests. They want to make eggs. So, you have a step to start. After that, you have egg bumping problems, which you have to, set, to solve by preparing your birds before breeding. I prepare my birds. I give them calcium in the form of eggs, as I told before. So, my females are ready to breed. 
So do you not feel any grit? Sorry? Do you not feel any grit? No. no. Not at all, no. ever. No. I am feeling only the minerals. Mm. I don't give grit. Maybe if I have the time to put some sand in a tray, river sand, just this. I don't use grit. The Senegal. Uh, pardon me, the one. Easy. If you have three or four pairs, as I say, the numbers explode. It's quite easy. Every bird gives four to five youngsters sometimes. Here it's a female. This nest, it's above an artificial nest which is on the bottom. They nest everywhere they want. You put a nest, no, I don't want, I want in the bottom. Okay, make a nest in the bottom. There are subspecies inside, once in Italy. I found this bird on the left as a male in Senegal, this male on the right as a female in Senegal. But it's obvious, okay, you have one Ruberima. It's a subspecies, you know, most people don't know in my region. So when I visit uh, readers, sometimes I see birds like this. And because we are close to the border, I can take birds to use for my collection and the breed. Okay, the African. Not enough to say for them. <coughs> Very beautiful. Uh, I would say quite too easy. Uh, and uh, my problem, uh, what I noticed with them is that uh, uh, one year it's okay, the other year, not so many. The other year, boom, the other year, not so many. So they have their time. And if you have the time to wait them, you can breed more and more. These birds, easy to balance the garden. I, I bred them in 6 cm cage. You see here the main incubating in the left in the right photo. Not a problem at all. With the next scale of difficulty, as I say, it's the black belly. Sorry. Uh, here it comes a little bit in the problem of parent rearing. Uh, it's not so easy as the other two species as we saw, but it can be done, okay, but it's not so easy for a case for my situation. You know, uh, they are very fragile if you inspect the nest. So I have seen the birds, the parents are outside, I open the, the nest, I see the birds, okay, I left the nest. The parents never again come inside. They just left the, the youngster die inside. So not so many inspections, and you can have results. Here you can see three youngsters of them, one real, and one female on the right. Okay. Until now was the easy ones for me. Now we start with the male. Virata. Okay, Virata comes to my hunt uh, last year. I get a lot of birds, around 20. I have a lot of birds to work with, uh, but I don't have the time to start. Uh, I put them to breed before two months. I start again, 60 centimeter cage, why not? I put a lot of nets in uh, different spots. Virata wants to nest in this country nest thing, I don't know what now. Anyway, in the, in the middle of the cage. And you see how the nest is. It's finished. It has eggs inside. And the open it's on the top. Never breed them until now. Hope uh, when I come back, I have some youngsters. Okay, I'm going to speak up in a cell, in a cell. It's easy to parent here. Not a big problem. Uh, you see, again, the nests uh, are the same as Mali. Sorry about the photo. Inside, in the lab, I can see that last is a female incubating. Uh, not a problem to rear the youngsters, very easy. And even if I took the youngsters outside, put the rings inside on, the, on their legs, <coughs> the mother keeps on feeding them. Uh, somebody asked me about uh, their fertility. As I notice in my birds, they don't have problem about fertility. The problem is about the rest still in my birds. It's three, four, three, four. 
I've heard of four or five eggs, but mine is three mainly. Uh, the only problem that can cause fertility, in my opinion, is the, the blood uh, that you cross with blood. So, the solution in this is to get, get wild birds. Or get birds from breeders that are far, far away. I mean, in case, in any case. So we can solve it. Uh, not much more to say about them. Here you can see a pair of Nibricolis. Uh, it's not so well the photo, it's the light. It's a little bit dark. Um, I don't breed them. I found uh, two pairs. I sent them to a friend in Germany to keep them. Uh, because she also breeds them. Uh, I didn't notice that uh, it's Nibricolis because uh, I have a problem with color blindness and uh, I saw uh, Vinatera, 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 Vinatera and one friend said to me, oh, it's not Vinatera, it's Nigricolis but I don't keep them and at last okay, I have these little demons very demons, I don't know how to say that the barbers it's the middle killers you know middle killers? you put them in a cage and if there are two males inside the one male kills them in the middle of the gate. Usually birds kill in the corner, you know, start killing. The bird goes in the corner and kills. Bar breasted kills immediately. So are dead. Uh, I have about two persons in my collection. Try to breed them. Not succeed until now. Nests, several nests, no eggs. Hope for next season. And that's for the fire thing series. <clears throat>